How about the static head thing? How much head am I allowed to put on the pump? Well, this is an open system, so we're lifting the fluid up. But we also got friction loss through the pipe to calculate the pump head. And we got to make sure the velocity stays over two feet per second to keep these solids in train to move them. We also may have back pressure where we're pumping to pressurized sewers, or they're going up a hill and you have back pressure. So there's all kinds of little things you got to deal with, but we got to do the pump head calculation exactly, precisely, because you cannot throttle these pumps. Remember, full open gate valve on the discharge. You're not allowed to throttle the valve. You're not allowed to balance these pumps. Don't overhead these pumps. You will be sorry. Do not overhead these pumps. Do a detailed head loss calculation to where you need to go. I think we kind of summarized that. Let's use a quick example to make sure you got it down pat. Uh, I've got a sump pump here now that's uh, 20 feet from the overhead main down to the top of the, of the basin. The basin's eight feet deep, and the submersible pump's where? Down the bottom of the basin. And that overhead return is pressurized. I've got it in feet. Yours will probably be in pounds, but we got it in feet, so we got something easy to work with. So the pressurized back charge is 19.7 feet. I got 28 feet of pipe, and my lift is how much? My lift is 28 feet. So I've got to figure, turning my pump on at the lowest level in the sump. I've got to be lifted at the very bottom all the way up. Correct? Good. So detailed pump head loss calculation kind of looked like this. In this case, my flow rate is 180 GPM. In order to keep my two feet per second, I'm going to use a four inch pipe size, which actually gives me four and a half feet. I took off all the pipe, all the elbows, all the T's, all the checks, and I come up with 126 of feet of equivalent feet of straight pipe, equivalent feet of straight pipe. And we're going to use the system size for this. And my friction loss, when you see from the system size in a minute, at 180 GPM, four inch pipe, is 2.3 feet total. That's my friction loss. So if I go to my system sizer, here's a quick snapshot, 180 GPM, four inch pipe, you'll see the friction loss is 1.8 feet per 100 feet of pipe. There's my velocity above two feet per second. That's where I've got my numbers from. And I put it all together. I got a static lift, remember, from the lowest level of the sump to the overhead is 28 feet vertical lift. I caution you to make sure you calculate it from the bottom of the sump and not the top. We've got to pump from the bottom all the way up. My friction loss is 2.3 feet. My back pressure was 19.7. And you see we made it come out to 50 feet, which is pretty typical of a sewage pump. But we did a detailed head loss calculation, and we'll be fine in this case. If you really want to have a way to create a record of this and walk your way through it, Bell & Gossett has a pretty nice sewage pump selection chart online. You can go to this website, you can bring it up, and it even will walk you through all the fixtures and the head loss calculation. Here's a little quick snapshot. We're not going to go through it in detail today, but the same problem we just had. You could go in and list, as you can see on the right-hand side, how many uh, elbows, how many T's, how many check valves, straight pipe, four inch, and it'll calculate the pressure drop for you. On the left-hand side, we got the static head, we got the, which was at 28 feet of lift. We got the back pressure, which was at 19.7 feet. I think you quickly see we can put everything in this online selection tool from Don Gossett, and it will give you the pump hit, and it gives you a permanent record of it, and you do need to calculate it. This is one you don't guess at. You make sure you calculate this. Thank you. Have a great day.